became the governor. That is why you laugh. I said, yes, Jonathan medicine is an important medicine. <laughs> that medicine, even though I'm not a medical doctor, but that medicine will serve the same purpose of the same disease and of the same patient. How do we stand up? How do we retrieve our nation? How do we go back to that vision that we had? How do we give our children the opportunities that we have had? And even better. And this is the question that each of us must take with us. It's not a comfortable situation to be in. But believe me, I would rather, I wear, you know, when people are not, when people are incompetent and they don't like you, you wear their dislike as a badge of honor. You can't, you can't be comfortable. You can't be normal in a dysfunctional environment. So we must get outside our comfort zone and that is the only way we'll change this country. And for the young people, do not fear. This is your country, this is your future. Take hold of it, work for it, build it. Don't let anyone tell you to run away because you have a degree. Go to England, go to America, go to France. This is your country, you're coming back here. With the look of things, it looks like there are some certain political interests. And this is the reason why I keep on saying that we should mind the way we tamper with some of our institutions. The current administration of APC has already damaged most of our institution already. And to add our traditional institution to it is going to cause us a very big trouble in the future. But I will say that Let's not forget that Sanusi was once removed as the CBN governor. He made a statement back then in 2013 that, that there was a 20 billion US dollar missing and that if that money is not being returned, in few years to come, Nigeria will suffer so much what economic hardship really means. We can now experience it eight years later. And now, because of his activism as the Emir of Khan back then, he was now removed because he made a statement that... You know, by the time announcement was made that I had been removed for insubordination. You know, that is the word, insubordination. And you would think that somebody who says you're subordinate to him is somebody who is superior to you. You know, and like I said in Abuja, I have my record of service. My father has his record of service. My grandfather has a record of service. We cannot be intimidated by somebody because you're president or you're a governor and we cannot tell you that you're wrong. We've chosen different paths. And I said yesterday and I'll say it again, if I'd gone into politics, at least given the people that have succeeded in becoming president in Nigeria, I could have been president. Or I could be governor. So, so that I choose not to go into politics does not make me a subordinate human being. And this is what we all have to learn as Nigerians. We take too much rubbish. And we're all too afraid, too much in our comfort zones. And by the time these guys finish with us, our children will not have a nation. And this is the real challenge that we face. How do we stand up? How do we retrieve our nation? How do we go back to that vision that we had? How do we give our children the opportunities that we have had? And even better. And this is the question that each of us must take with us. And the only way to do it is, if you're not in politics, you must hold those in politics to account. And this cost him his job, or what I said, his throne. And now, he has been reinstated by this current administration. And we have been seeing a lot of outcry as to they should obey court order. But this is not to advocate that we should be neglecting court order. 
But under this present administration of APC-led government, not under Tinubu's regime alone, right from Bola, right from Muhammad Buhari's administration, we have seen a lot of uh, you know lawlessness from the government side, where court order upon court order has been neglected. Let's not even talk far. What happened to Namdekano? What happened to so many court orders that have been released by you know from the court of which the government never listened to them? What happens to even the court order that uh, was given when Sanusi was removed as the Emir of Kano? What about the court, they mean the case that he won in court back then in Abuja Federal High Court when he was removed as the Emir? All these were neglected. And let's not forget, in 2023, back in September 6th and October respectively, we saw how they gave a kangaroo judgment as to the presidential petition tribunal all the way to the Supreme Court. So when you talk about obeying court orders and obeying the rule of law, this APC-led government is one of the government that, you know, you can actually point out to as a government that don't respect the rule of law because severally you see them disobeying court order. And this is not to be in support of the government of Kano, I mean the state government, for not, you know, obeying the court order. But then, when you look at the situations that surround this all, you will understand that even the purported court order that was given, were they served? That's another question. We also learned that the person who was to be the judge was not even in Nigeria. So how were they able to get the court order? And let's not forget as well, that in the court order and all of that, there were supposed to be some certain level of, uh, you know, uh, uh, argument before the judge and all of that before you serve a client you know and and all of that but then it happens that all these processes were not done how can you approach the court on Thursday get everything done on Thursday and then you serve but meanwhile we had a case in court for over six months before the case was determined and a lot of back and front here and there will all this solve the problem that is facing Nigerians as of today is a no but then the traditional institution cannot be tampered with i have said countless times on this channel that even the democracy that we practice is not even favoring us we should return back to our traditional system where we have our monarch and there was you know sanity in the land there was peace and the security of our uh, our dear neighbors you know we were all paramount to everyone but now that we embrace the Western uh, form of government, we can see how this has jeopardized our future in terms of our resources, you know, our security and everything that you can ever imagine. But then, Kano State is a volatile state. And if this issue is not being resolved amicably, it may throw the whole country into another chaos. And the president needs to understand it very well, that his government is at stake here. If he doesn't wait in, you know, in a peaceful way and see how this can be done. But away from that, the governor of uh, Kano State pleaded with the president earlier today that the current, I mean, the disposed emir, uh, Amino Ado Bayori, should be taken out of the state. According to the state government, he insisted that Bayro continue to stay in the state constitutes a threat to the peace and stability of the peace-loving people of Kano. The deputy governor of the state, uh, Comrade Amido, stated this today while addressing newsmen on happening around the chieftaincy crisis in Kano. This is according to Daily Post. But if we look at this again from another angle, um, according to him, out of eight respondents, only one respondent, the Inspector General of Police, was served with the court order, while others, including the Kano State Government, were not served, talking about the issues of court order. So when you look at this carefully, you will understand that the best thing to do, just like the Emir, as of that time, under Ganduje, was removed and he peacefully left the state and there was no issue. I believe that this current area, if he felt that, you know, he has been removed unjustfully, he should leave the state and approach the courts and see how this issue can be resolved. But then, let's not forget, let's not allow politicians to tamper with our tradition. 
na system. They shouldn't tamper with our institutions because by so doing, they are trying to tarnish, you know, what God has given to us as Africans. And that will be a detriment to the development of African nations, Nigeria to be precise, in the nearest future. What do you make of this? Let's have a look at the comment section. Thank you for watching.